the participants from Australia, just one hour difference. What are the forests? You from Australia? Yeah. How about Turkey? Where is Turkey? What, what is the difference? Six hours. That's very <laughs> in between, right? In between. How about Colombia? 14 hours? I sympathize you. <laughs> but I'm from Syracuse, New York, the upstate, and we have a 13 hour difference. How many are from America here? Wow, the largest. Huh? <laughs> so good to have you here. My name is Jong Wu Han. Uh, I'm teaching political science in Syracuse University, but at the same time, I'm the president of Korean War Veterans Digital Memorial. It's not a physical museum, but it's in the cyberspace, in the internet. And I think it's very important to have oral histories and their memories in the internet before it gets too late. So that's why I started this uh, Digital <coughs> Memorial Foundation, and it's uh, officially supported by the MPBA, Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs, the, the institution that prepared this program, Peace Camp, okay? And there is a coordinator ship behind, behind you. So why don't we give them a big round of applause to the MPBA. You <laughs> have all the book left, right? Yeah. That has all the PowerPoint slides, which is more around 40 but I drastically reduced my presentation today, so it's not going to be too long. But at the end of this booklet, I gave you a proposal. Okay, let's go back. Let's look at that, the last two pages. Uh, okay, this section after the blue insert, after the blue insert, I KWP Legacy Project, Global Peace Camp Congress. That's my sort of ambitious vision to propose to you at the end of my presentation. All right? So, let's start. I want to show you the uh, digital memorial that I established. KWV, Korean War Veterans, and David and Mary, Digital Memorial, .org. And you can see what they did during the war. So go to the veterans, and you can go to last name, then alphabetically categorized, and if you click, you can see their interview. Korean War veterans, but also I have a descendant from Thailand, Belgium, uh, England, <coughs> New Zealand, and one Colombia. Okay, so. Some of you from the United States, if you are interested in it, you can participate in the workshop. My foundation will cover up to $1,000. Basically, the transportation, all hotel rooms are reserved already, and we have a program. So you're just coming in and have a, some kind of presentation. You can do research about the Korean War and your grandfather, or I will show you some, so, some of the computer graphic uh, uh, products, and you can do that. Or if you are good at Facebook or the uh, Instagram or the Twitter, okay, you can use the data or you can use the local data and then promote the legacy of the Korean War and Korean War veterans. Love, sacrifice, right? That's full of story. And it has never ended. Still going. This is one of the longest war in the 20th century. This year, we are celebrating 60 years anniversary of the armistice and U.S. alliances. But the war never been replaced with the peace treaty. Okay? What else can you tell from this poster? This 
is the map uh, attached from the U.S. Army and Navy and Air Force, and there are full of pictures of the criminal veterans. This is the actual envelope. This is the calendar they used to exile. I want to go back. I want to get out of here. You know, all these things will form the criminal veterans. What I'm trying to tell, there are two main messages. The Korean War has never been ended, and in the minds of Korean people, it's never been forgotten. But most of the Korean War veterans that I used to do the interview, the questions that they received when they returned from Korea to their own home, they were asked, where have you been? Oh my goodness, where have you been? Can you believe? That's the difference between World War II and the Korean War. The World War II among the Westerns, but it's about Western affairs, and they had a clear victory, right? Right. So it was a popular war, but the Korean War really wasn't popular, wasn't recognized. Most of your grandfather didn't know where they are dragging into. That's the Korean War. So this is what I'm trying to do. I want to construct, reconstruct their memories, their sacrifice, that it will never be forgotten. So my presentation, I want to get something out of it. This is, as I mentioned, it's a rare occasion. Young generations from 21 countries getting into one place. We got to have something rather than side, right? Huh? Do you agree? I hate it. He's everywhere. <laughs> and I think the answer is coming from who you are. Who you are. It's not, young, it's not just young generation from 21 countries. You are special. Why? Because your grandparents came here in this land. And I think we can answer to that question. What good can come out of this camp, this camp? based on what Koreans have been going through, Korean history. Korea is unprecedented. As you saw from the videos, we are the only country, I think, in the 20th century and even from human history that we were able to accomplish simultaneous economic and political development at the same time during the very short period of time, 30 years. 1360 to 1480, that's the Industrial Revolution. That's how Westerns achieved the economy and then political development, democracy, right? We started from scratch after the war. Everything devastated, nothing left. We started from the beginning and we were able to be called one of the most substantive democracies in East Asia and also economy. With the size of Indiana State in the United States, they are now the 11th largest economy. So, already there are something good came out of the Korean War, but there are something that we need to do a little bit more. Okay? And I want to ask you that question. See if you can do make some difference. Okay? Finally, I want to propose that you do work with the Foundation and MPBA so that we can construct together the memories in the cyberspace and then why not? Let's make it as a world congress of the Korean War veteran generations. Young generation, I'll give you the example. There were precedents. Okay? Who are you? Who am I? Why am I here? Who are we? Am I confused? I'm asking you the same question. What are the difference between who are you, who am I, and who are we? What do you think that I'm trying to tell you? Yes. What is your name? Kyle. Huh? Kyle. Kyle. The only difference is where we're from. We all came to support the same cause. Yes. Yes. Well, what else? Who are you? Who am I? It's the same question, right? And the third line, the questions in the third line, who are we? Yes? You can make more of a difference as a group than as an individual. That's it. You are an individual from 21 countries. You share the same background. 
we have the same grandfather. Right? We have no parents. But when we get together and making a generation, Korean more veteran generation, we can do much, we can do much better than what each individual can achieve. That's what I am trying to achieve. Uh, yes. So I call it metamorphosis from who I am, individual. Even though you are the Korean War veteran descendant, as an individual, but not as a community. There are not many things that you can do, but when we get together as a generation, Korean War veteran generation, we can do it. So we need metamorphosis, transformations. And I, I am too ambitious that I'm trying to do that in an hour. We'll see, okay? Let's look at the Korean history after the war. You know, the professor Ye gave a good video coverage, right? So you, you understand that you were already educated, so you know what Korea, uh, what Korean War was. After the Korean War in 1950 to 53, up to 91 here, this is the, the era of the Cold War, right? The global society was evenly divided. There were two big poles. United States, representing democracy and capitalism, Soviet Union, the communism. New idea that they want to reform the whole world and they wanted to change and make it better world. Who won? 1991, Soviet Union collapsed, right? Yeah. Up to that point, Korean Peninsula became much more unstable. Why? Because there was a big box in the two poles, right? Soviet Union and US, they were able to control the local affairs. But not any longer. Soviet Union is gone, and North Korea left by themselves. The China is there as a big brother, but still, the relationship between China and North Korea is not any longer what it used to be. Yeah, that's the whole trust. So it became such instabilized and from 92 to up to 2000, North Korea went through a series of drafts and flood, and then Kim Il-sung died in 1994. Kim Jong-il was embarrassed because their economic policy clearly failed. Okay? So they showed up the food, millions of people died of hunger. They were embarrassed. That's why they came up to the negotiation table in 2000. That's the sunshine policy of the invasion of the From 2002 to 2000, up to now, that's why there is a six-party talk. North Korea actually wants to be recognized by the United States. They want to normalize the relationship with the United States because they know that the U.S. is the only country that either kill or make them alive. So they want to normalize the relationship you may not believe in it, but I've been engaging in the academic history of academic collaboration exchange program with North Korean University, completely supported by the United States government and funded by the Korean government. So since 2002 to 2011, I invited North Korean scholars to the Syracuse University campus. I invited them to the Beijing, and I taught them IT-related English, in information technology English, so that they can participate in the international collaboration. That's what's been doing. But what I'm trying to say that the Korean War brought the Korean success in the economy and democracy, but at the same time, this war has not been ended. And still, we have so many problems. Divided Korea, unification is far away, nobody wants to unify, nobody wants to be agreement of the Korean reunification. And all the nuclear weapons, 98% of the all nuclear weapons owned by five countries. Cool. Right? And now there is some proliferations and North Korea is one of them. And that's the, the source of problem right now. Right? Yeah, everybody wants to get rid of this nuclear weapon. And that's what it is right now, the Korean Peninsula, one of the most instabilized and heavily militarized zone in the world. What do you see? What do you think this picture tells you? 
Looks like the tool ships in both sides from the same country, right? Same side. The one in the sandwich in the middle is Chinese fishing boat. And so, what is this? Huh? It's a Japanese Navy. Yeah, Coast Guard. And why do they do this? Because there is a territorial dispute between Japan and China. This is the island here. The Japanese, in Japanese, a Shenkaku. In Chinese, it's a Daiwotai. Daiwotai. And there are disputes. So it's not just about the Korean Peninsula. The problem in East Asia is actually between China and Japan. And U.S. is everywhere. Okay. This is the region. Very dangerous. And that is the kind of legacy of the Korean War. I don't have enough time to go into the uh, details of the Korean War. And that's not my uh, goal. So again, again, what could did come out of the Korean War? As I told you, economic success, right? You watch the video. But I want to show you in a different way. Now, the Republic of Korea can serve as model of free democracy and economic power out of ashes. As I told you, it is unprecedented simultaneous achievement of both, both political and economic development. And finally, we began to offer aid. We used to be the recipient of the of aid from the United States, from the United uh, Nations, many countries. But now we began to offer our aid to the countries that still have lots of problems. I'm not saying that Korea doesn't have any problem, right? But we are offering this aid. Isn't this a great transformation, right? In 60 years, in 60 years, look at it. In 1945, when we were liberated from the Japanese colonial control, we were almost zero, nothing. Nothing. Japanese industrialization policy was not for the Korean economy for the sake. It was for their relatives so that they could have it as a springboard toward Manchuria, China, and Southeast Asia. So virtually, when we were liberated from the Japanese colonial control, our economy was zero. 1953, after the war, virtually zero, right? But in 1960, there was a military coup in 1961, but President Park Chung hee mobilized and industrialized our economy. State was empire and player, you know, pitcher and batter and catcher in the baseball game. So that's the radical difference between Western laissez-faire economic uh, ideology and Korean model of state and society collaboration very strongly together so that they could catch up Western economic development. So up to 1980 and 1990, look at it. This is like a trajectory of an airplane taxed out from their uh, warehouse and then go into the wrong, uh, wrong way and begin to take off. And reaching to the maturity. That's the 1990. That's how we industrialized our economy in 20 years, in 1997. And then there was IMF crisis. Many countries was really severely hit, right? But we were able to go through, and now Korean economy is the model of sustainable economic development now, right? Look at this. In 1961, our per capita GNI, $82. $82. Now we have, you see that, right? Commodity export in US dollar in 1961, altogether $41 million. Now $464 million. United's largest economy in the world. Employment share, agriculture was everything at the time, 63%. Now it's a 4.9, 5%. Life expectancy from 55 to 80. And one of the most important things in our economic development, the most important variable in economic development is the education. And in Korea, 
education, education, and education. That's what my mom used to say, you know. Look at it. From agricultural product in 1960s, we started with the light industries, making wheat. So my uncle in New York City, he used to sell this wheat and black leather jacket and sneakers, and you know, he became a millionaire. <laughs> And textile, automobile now, semiconductor market. We are the biggest oh, semiconductor market leader in the world. Samsung, Galaxy, and uh, LG, and Cantac, right? Yes. And as I mentioned, government always plays a very central role in this process, rapid economic development process. So that's the different model. That's the different model. I mean, after 29, the Great Depression, every Western economy had a very strong role from the government too. But the virtue is that less intervention of government in the market, that's been guided as virtue, right? But from the, uh, in Korea, from the very beginning, we all expect the state will do something. State will do something. So there are some differences. And as I pointed out, the education policy really played a significant role in economic development. Okay, how was it possible in 30 years? There are several reasons, but the biggest reason, your grandpa came to a country, a strange country that never heard of before, and fought for us so that we could do this thing. And you are the descendant of those critical veterans. As I told you, I'll give you the example how the transformation from individual Korean War veterans descendant to <coughs> Korean War veteran descendant generation can do. The good example is 1914 Generation. That's the book title, written by Robert Wall. Anybody know about this generation from Europe? England, Belgium, <laughs> oh yes, where are you from? Turkey, Turkey. yes. Uh, there has been a uh, world war, but the first world war was uh, started in uh, 1914. Young generation around 1914 who opposed to the World War I. They mobilized intellectuals and the citizens and they engaged in the uh, movement, social movement and political movement, so that they could they could prevent. I mean they wanted to prevent this from happening. Okay? So this is what a young generation was trying to do. 100 years ago, 1914 generation. I'm not that ambitious. There are precedented that the young generation can do something about what's happening all around the world. What is the generation? Actuality or arising only when similarly located individuals shared a common destiny and participated actively and passively in the social and intellectual movement that was shaping and transforming the historical situation. It's a academic definition. Do you think that you have something very similar to that ingredients in the definition of generation? Do you share something? Right? Definitely, what is it? You have a Grandfather as criminal veterans, right? And you're not here to learn how to fight, right? No. You are here to learn the lesson of the Korean War. So you are peace-loving young generations. And what are the another common denominators among you, among all of you? Students, yes, you're still learning. Yeah? 
Same generation, yes. Technology, this is it. You are not cowboy, but handphone guy. Huh? We share everything here together, right? How many of you doing Facebook? Most of you, right? How many of you have a Twitter account? Yes. Before, in the very beginning of American democracy, there was nothing like this, right? There are not much telephone, no cellular phone at all. At the time, they had a face-to-face -face interaction, and that's how they built the trust. And they were able to do something together based on this face-to-face -face interaction. But is that the only way that we can build social capital? No. Even though you never meet, but you can still share the same norms and value, and you can do actually act on some agenda, right? Yeah. And that's happening in the Facebook. So, you share many things. So, now I want to say, who are we? Not I, as an individual, coming from the country, that where the UNF are actually participating in the Korean War, but as a group, as a generation, that's sharing so many things together. And you are networked with internet technology. You are the descendants of the Korean War veteran from East and West, built on our trust of your grandfather's blood. You are here because you are the descendant, grandson or granddaughter. And we trust you as a descendant. I hope that there are any people here came here without that qualification, right? You are all descendants, right? Yes, yes. yes. So we share the norms, value, peaceful coexistence, and mutual prosperity. That's what we want. No war. And we are networked through OSN, online social media. That's a powerful tool, powerful tool. President Obama, the way that he campaigned in the United States, completely different, I don't need explanation, right? You don't need explanation. He drew the cellular phone, asking all the young generation to draw their own cellular phone, and then give the whole one phone number for the fundraising, and ask them to send their message to their friends. At the speed of light, they are reaching out to millions, and that's how he broke the record. Million dollars overnight, right? That's what happened, and you can do that. That's what I'm teaching in this circus university. So, I came up with my own definition. We, the global peace camp generation, connect through online social media to honor our own grandparents and preserve their legacy and promote global peace and prosperity. Very ambitious. Very too, maybe it sounds too big to you right now. But everything starts from very small. Okay? And this is my book about the power and influence of the information technology and how does that affect our economy, how does that affect our elections and democracy. And I have empirical evidence. Let me give you one more example. Oh. Dr. Glenn Page, anybody heard about him? He is the author of the book called Korean Decision. He was a Korean War veteran. He was actually the students of Princeton University. When Korean War broke out, he drafted. He came to Korea. He killed many, many Chinese and Kore North Koreans, right? came back, continued to study, he got the PhD, and he wrote the decision-making process of how President Truman came to uh, the kind of decision to dispatch the United Nations and U.S. forces to the Korean War. Korean decision is a classical book in political science and international relations. Later, later, he founded Center for Global Non-Killing. And he is using Korea as a, the best example. That's one 
blocking that came out of the Korean War. The center for global non-dealing. 